Without objection. Mr. President, I am again on this floor this afternoon because it is again apparent that Congress will fail to pass the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act. Congress will again fail to compensate those Americans who have been exposed by their own government to nuclear radiation, to nuclear testing, to nuclear waste. Why is Congress failing to act again? Well, because the House doesn't want to vote on it. The House doesn't want to vote on the radiation bill as part of the FAA. The House doesn't want to vote on the radiation bill as part of anything. The House just doesn't want to vote at all. Now, it's a pattern, Mr. President, because this government's refusal to take responsibility for what it did is a pattern that continues to this day, and it's time to break it. Because of what the government did, people like Zoe from St. Louis, she was born, this little girl with a mass on her ovary, born with it. Why? Well, because her parents lived right near the creek that has been contaminated with nuclear radiation for decades and decades. She had to have surgery to remove that mass from her body when she was three weeks old. Three weeks. She's five years old now, and she continues to experience regular complications from this disease that she was born with because of what the federal government did. She's not the only one, not by a stretch, long stretch. There's Zach Visentine. Zach was born with a rare brain tumor, one known to be caused by radiation. He had his first surgery when he was one week old. He started chemotherapy when he was three weeks old. And Zach died when he was six. Why? Well, because his parents lived in that same region of St. Louis, right along that creek that the government poisoned, right along that waterway that the government contaminated, right along that area where the government said for decades, totally fine, totally safe. People played in the water. They built their homes right along the creek. Schools were built there. It was contaminated the entire time. And now Zach's family is left to mourn. Or there's Claire. Claire's parents also grew up in the St. Louis area. Claire's parents grew up to, uh, near another nuclear site called Weldon Spring, which is out in St. Charles, Missouri. For those who don't know the state, that's just to the west there of St. Louis. Claire was diagnosed as a baby with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma when she was only two years old. This is happening not just in Missouri. We could talk about the victims of the Trinity test, the original Oppenheimer test, like Bernice Gutierrez. Bernice was eight days old when Trinity was detonated, eight days. What we now know was, despite the government telling people at the time that there was no danger to their lives or property or persons, despite them saying it was, it was fine, the nuclear fallout, the radiation, generated a cloud so large nearly the entire state of New Mexico was covered. And Bernice lived just, just miles from the test site. 44 members of Bernice's family, 44, have been diagnosed with cancer or radiation-linked diseases. Her mother had cancer three times, three times. Three of her brothers have had cancer, her sister has had cancer, and she has a thyroid disease that is radiation-induced. Her oldest son passed away from radiation illness, her daughter died of thyroid cancer, and 36 additional relatives, additional, have died of cancer and radiation-linked thyroid disease. What has Bernice received from the United States government? An apology? Nope. Recognition? Nope. Compensation? Not a dime. Not a dime. The Senate compensating these Americans says it costs too much. And he goes on and says that any compensation should be reserved for people, I'm quoting now, who have been determined to actually be suffering. To actually be suffering as a result of radiation exposure. I have to tell you, I don't understand the statement at all. I do not understand it. I do not understand why it's not good enough for these children and their suffering to matter. I don't understand why the thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of Americans poisoned in my state and other states, why that isn't good enough for this body to act. We have evidence, we have studies. This has been years of research done on the scope of the government's tests, on the scope of the downwind exposure to radiation, on the uranium processing done in Missouri and in Tennessee and Kentucky and so many other states, Ohio. We know what the facts are. That's why this body finally acted. And I would just say to the speaker, it is incumbent now on you to act. Do not turn back and do not listen to those who would tell you to put people last and money first. Make no mistake, the bill for this program has been paid. The bill for this radiation has been paid. It's been paid by the American people. They're the ones who are paying the costs. They're the ones who are dying. They're the ones who are having to forego cancer treatments, treatments for their children, because they can't afford it, because their government has exposed them to this radiation negligently and now won't do anything about it. They're paying the cost. It's time the government bore its share. Now, this is a moment of truth for Congress and also for the party of which I am a member. It's a moment of decision. If you want to be the party of working people, you have to stand up for working people. If you want to be the party of those who have 
fought and died and bled and given their health for this country, you have to stand up for them. This is the time. This is the time. This is a test, Mr. President, and it is time for the, my party to rise to it, along with the rest of this Congress, to honor the people who have built this nation. So yes, Mr. President, I am in earnest about it. And yes, I do feel a heaviness of heart about this today because yes, the clock is ticking. I know that the lives that we have lost, we can never get back. I realize that. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't act now to help those who are suffering now. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't act now to right the wrong. It was wrong for the government to poison the American people, lie to them about it, and do nothing about it. That was wrong, but we can right that wrong. This is America, we can make it right. The bill the Senate passed makes it right. This is a moral matter, it is a moral commitment. I call on the House to act without delay. I call on them to do the right thing without hesitation. I urge the Speaker, do what's right for the American people. Do what's right for the American people of this nation. If you do, the nation will commend you and stand with you. Courage in the service of justice is what we need now, and I urge him toward it. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.